Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This is Rishabh from Ascending Techie and today we are going to talk about whether you should overclock your Ryzen 73700X or any other 3000 series CPU for that matter or not. And if you want to do so, what is the right way to achieve it? So for a week now, I've been trying to see how much I can push my chip with an air cooler which is the Noctua NHD 15 Chrome Max on an Airflow case, which is the Lian Li Lan 215, for the sake of understanding its capabilities. So, when I first built this system, I made a slight change in the BIOS, which was changing from the normal mode to ASUS optimal mode in the BIOS, and I forgot that I made this change. And then I changed my default view to the advanced view instead of the uh, simple view or easy mode as they say. And because of this, my processor would max out at 4.05 uh, gigahertz at any given workload. It would not boost past that limit. This was a little bit concerning and I could not figure out why the boosting would not happen. Then I reset the BIOS, which changed the default view to the easy mode. And that's how I learned that that it must be the power plan which was doing the same. Also, get rid of the AI suit in case you have installed it if you have an ASUS motherboard. So, if you are locked at a certain frequency, then I would recommend you to change your power plan or I would recommend you to reset your BIOS and then check all the settings again. Uh, let me show you how to do it. I'm using ASUS Stuff B550M Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. So some of the keys I mentioned might be different for you on motherboards from other brands. Go into the BIOS and if you have been messing around with it, I'd recommend you to reset it first. Press F7 to go to the advanced mode and go to the exit tab and select load optimized defaults and save changes by pressing F10. Now we go to the AI tweaker tab and enable XMP first which will run our RAM at the rated speeds. In the ASUS BIOS though, it is called DOCP. So switch to that and select the profile in case you have multiple profiles for your RAM. Now before we go any further, I'd recommend you to test the system first on all other settings on auto and see how much your system is boosting. So if your processor is rated for 4.4 GHz as in our case, then and if your processor is boosting to 4.3 or 4.4 or 4.15, then I'd recommend you to stick with those values, keep them on auto and use it that way. You should also make sure that you have precision boost overdrive enabled in your system. So set it up on auto and let it do its thing to see how much your processor can boost. Something else that I'd like to say is that if you're running on the stock cooler and if you run PBO, it is possible that your processor might get very hot. In this case, turn off PBO and check how much speed your processor is getting because it might cause the chip to overheat. But if you are using an AIO or if you are using aftermarket cooler, then you are better off uh, keeping the PBO on. Do a few test runs and see how much your uh, processor is boosting with Ryzen Master or Hardware Info, whatever you prefer. As I said, if it's boosting anywhere above 4 GHz, then I'd recommend you to keep those settings. For overclocking, you can change the core multiplier from the BIOS. You have to type in for example, if you want to set the frequency of 4.4 GHz, you have to type in 44.00. This will set uh, 44 into 100 as your frequency. For voltages, I would recommend you to switch to manual and then press the plus button on your keyboard and increase the voltage as much necessary. But as you will see further in the video, I would not recommend you to do this. Something else that you can try, which I tried myself, is that you can change the multiplier to whatever frequency you want and you can set the voltage on auto. But at these times, uh, the processor will be using much more voltage than necessary or safe to boost the chip to a higher frequency that you have locked it to. This would also contribute a lot to degrading the chip faster. In the precision boost overdrive menu, you can switch the limits to manual and then you can change the PPT, TDC and EDC. 
the best PPT, TDC and EDC as recommended by Buildzoid are 300 watts of PPT and then 230 amps of TDC and 230 amps of EDC. Something else that I also found is that rather than monitoring your voltage from Hardware Info or Ryzen Master, you should rather be monitoring your voltages which are actually much slower there but you should be monitoring those from CPU Z instead of Ryzen Master or Hardware Info because Hardware Info is checking the sensor so frequently that it actually does not let the cores sleep and keeps them on idle and as I said before idle voltages are much higher like 1.45 volts or 1.4 volts so you would frequently see high voltages just because you are trying to see the voltages from hardware info so don't try to use that Now when I started learning how to overclock the 3700X, it became pretty obvious pretty soon that running above 1.3 to 5 voltages was considered unsafe as per a lot of posts on the internet, especially on Reddit and on several tech forums. There are also accounts of people who have degraded their chips to, uh, by running them above, at, uh, there are also accounts of many people who have degraded their chips by running them about these voltages and these voltages are not recommended for daily usage. So, so if you're okay with the chip degrading a little bit over time, so uh, degrading in terms of chip means uh, reduced frequencies. So if your 3700X is uh, boosting to 4.4 today, then maybe after one year of continuously running it on a constant 4.4 OC, it would not boost to 4.4 anymore. Maybe it would only boost to 4.37 or 4.35. This is what degrading is. Something else is that I did found this post on Reddit, which mentions that the chip itself can monitor its own data much better than any human can. So it has a built-in safety system which would keep the voltages below the required uh, below the harmful ranges to ensure maximum performance. So all in all, I would recommend that you rather run your system on auto instead of locking the system at a certain voltage because then the system would not be able to reduce the voltage when it is considered unsafe. And in case the system needs more voltage for a single core performance boost at for example, while you are playing a game or when you want or when you are doing some single core workload then the chip then that then that single core would not have the required voltage to boost high and you would actually be losing more performance so after all the tweaking and overclocking and everything that i have done what i learned is that i set it on auto in my bios I set the core multiplier on auto, I set the voltage on auto, I set precision boost on auto. The only thing that I changed are the PPT, TDC and EDC values in the BIOS which might help you with the precision boost overdrive. So all in all, I would recommend you that if you are on the stock cooler, you can use precision boost overdrive, don't overclock and you're much better off, especially in India, uh, the temperatures are relatively higher to other countries. So the potential of throttling because of temperature is very high than other countries. Also with the 4.4 gigahertz overclocks and the overclocks at 4.3 gigahertz with 1.4 volts, 1.35 volts, 1.37 volts, the temperatures were pretty high. So if I were going to do a stress test on a software like CPU-Z, a very basic software which is not extremely hard like the Prime 95, then the temperatures would spike to 80 or 85 degrees Celsius which is not common on a beefy cooler like this. So clearly there's a sign that 
you should not be running your chip at high voltages. But when I switched everything to auto the frequency and the voltages, the CPU-Z stress test now maxes out at 60 degrees Celsius. I think that's pretty neat. So the processor actually can handle the voltages much better even though they look very high in the hardware, mon uh, hardware info or in Ryzen Master. Usually when there's no load, uh, you will see voltages about 1.4 something volts and if it's boosting then I usually see voltages around 1.36, 1.35 or to the minimum 1.33. So I think the processor knows much better to use the right voltages rather than us. I would not recommend you to overclock these processors because there's not much headroom. You are not going to be rendering 3D images or you are not going to be rendering 3D scenes on this processor all day long. Uh, in a manner that such minute gains in performance would matter to you because I have streamed playing Valorant, Fortnite and whatnot and the performance I have seen is not any different. I am not able to distinguish the performance between an overclocked 3700X and a non-overclocked stock 3700X. So this is my conclusion. Don't overclock your processor, let it run on auto, this would help the lifespan of your processor. If it's not boosting anywhere above 4 GHz, I think this should be a concern. You should reset your BIOS, you should possibly reinstall Windows in case something is going wrong and you have uh, or some software is messing up with you, uh, uninstall that or maybe try applying for warranty with AMD. There is a lot of ground that we can gain in multi-core workloads. But this is not at all beneficial when it comes to single core performance. Uh, as you can see in the benchmarks, a few points more, for example, 100 points or 200 points more in Cinebench don't mean much in real life when you're not going to render scenes all the time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something to learn about the 3700X or about the 3000 series processors in general. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, be kind to everyone.